The Mellow TV Evening News at 8 is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Coronavirus is in Jamaica, and I know you feel scared and worried. But you can't let COVID-19 divide us. Coronavirus infects all kinds of people. It doesn't discriminate. So why should you? When someone coughs or sneezes or shows signs of the virus, tell them to call 888-1LOVE immediately. And remember, stay three feet away, but don't attack or disrespect them because we're all in this thing together. Come on, Jamaica, cut the hate and don't discriminate. Let us stand together and fight COVID-19 as one family, one nation. Tonight, analysis of CSEC results indicates that 76.5% of students were awarded grades 1 to 3 in all subject areas. Of the subject entries, 167,469 were awarded grades 1 to 3. New measures to be taken to facilitate education due to the continued surge of COVID-19 cases as schools prepare to reopen on October 5. We are confirming that schools will be considered reopened on October 5th. We'll use a combination of approaches. Still tonight, for term MP Lisa Hanna, today named front-runner for the presidency of the PNP by a Bill Johnson poll. And the Jamaica National Foundation offers 15 one-year tertiary scholarships to universities and colleges in Jamaica. Good evening. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has reported that the country has recorded 126 new positive cases of COVID-19, taking the total of positive cases on the island to 5,395. The Health Ministry has also reported that one additional patient has died from the virus, taking the total of COVID-19 deaths to 76. The deceased is said to be a 61-year-old woman from the parish of St. James. Also, the new COVID-19 cases, with ages ranging from 2 to 99 years, includes 58 men and 65 women, while there are other cases currently under investigation. The cases are from Kingston and St. Andrew with 67, St. Catherine with 10, St. Anne 16, St. James has recorded 20 cases, Trelawney 2, Hanover and Westmoreland 1 case each, Manchester 7 cases and Clarendon 2 cases. Also, 37 additional persons have recovered from the virus, taking the total of recovered persons to 1,444. The country now has a total of 3,792 active cases of COVID-19. Still making news tonight, Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Fable Williams, says that the preliminary report and analysis of the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examination results indicate that 76.5% of Jamaican students were awarded passing scores of grades 1 to 3 in all subject areas. There were 233,723 two subject entries from all Jamaican candidates. Of the subject entries, 167,469 or 76.5% were awarded grades one to three. In grade one, 18 percent of the subject ent entries were successful in grade one, 28.6 percent in grade two, and 29.8 or roughly 30 percent in grade three. Total subject entries for males were 93,093 with 91.4% uh, being sat and 63,395 attaining the required grades. On the other hand, 
total subject entries for females were 140,630, with 95.1% being sat and 104,074 or 77.8% 78, attaining grades 1 to 3. Now, Minister Williams also gave a breakdown of the recorded percentage of passes in subject areas such as mathematics and English language. In the area of maths and English language, the recorded percentage passes were 55.6% for math and 83.9% for English language. In other subject areas, there are nine subjects that had average pass rates of over 90%. These were agricultural science, double award, 94.4%, agricultural science, single award, 92.9%, electronic document preparation and management, 96.4%, food, nutrition and health, 91.9%, Information technology, 90.2%, physical education and sport, 98.6%, principles of business, 93.4%, religious education, 90%, and theater arts, 92.3%. Now, of the 39,562 candidates that sat the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination, CAPE, Minister Williams said that 36,469 attained grades 1 to 5 for a 92% pass rate. Still making news tonight, come October 5, the reopening of schools will take on three approaches to facilitate education due to the continued surge of COVID-19 cases on the island. More on this story with Killeen May. Jamaican students will not be going back to the classroom on October 5 as was previously announced. According to Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Favel Williams, the continuing surge in COVID-19 cases on the island had made it impractical to facilitate face-to-face -face instruction in schools. Minister Williams, during yesterday's press conference, explained that three approaches will be taken to facilitate learning by students. The first is the online approach. We are confirmed that schools will be considered reopened on October 5th. Schools will use a combination of approaches. First approach is the online approach in which students remain at home and access lessons via the ministry's learning management system in which teachers and students will be in a virtual environment the teachers will be able to teach online, the lessons will be recorded, and the students will be able to access at their convenience and as many times as they would like. And this, we believe, will help to improve the mastery of the subject matter. Approximately 20,000 teachers have been trained on this online learning management system, which is a cloud-based system. Under the second and third approaches, the minister will be providing lessons or the platform for lessons using television, cable and radio, along with providing printed materials for students to utilize along with their textbooks and worksheets at home. The second approach is that the ministry will be providing lessons or the platform for lessons using TV, cable and radio. Students will get classes via TV, TV, cable, or radio. And the ministry will provide the, the schedule. The, approach, the third approach is that the ministry will provide printed material for students to utilize along with their textbooks and worksheets at home. These will be delivered to agreed drop-off points and at home. And this approach is particularly applicable for students without internet access. She noted that some principals have expressed that they would want to facilitate some amount of face-to-face -face interaction, especially in deep rural areas. However, Williams said the minister will be guided by the health-related information. Many principals have asked us about the possibility of students coming to the classroom, especially for those schools in remote, deep rural communities. 
principals have even said to us that they'd like to be able to focus on the exam cohort. And in some cases where there's a lack of supervision at home of students by their parents, they would like those students to come into the classroom as well. We're going to be guided by the health-related information, the completion of the health inspections in schools. And so over time, depending on how we move through this pandemic, we will know better how to bring students back in the physical environment in a safe way. The Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, says the government has taken the only option it could at this point in the COVID-19 pandemic to formally reopen the school system on October 5. Reporting for Mellow TV News, I'm Colleen May. In other news tonight, the Jamaica National Foundation is offering 15 one-year tertiary scholarships to attend universities and colleges in Jamaica. Now, the deadline for the submission of applications is October 5. Prospective applicants are being invited to access the application on the JN Foundation's website at www.jnfoundation.com forward slash JN scholarships. Now, to be eligible for the scholarships, applicants must be Jamaican, must have completed one year at one of the eligible institutions, and applicants should have a minimum grade point average GPA of 3.0. Other requirements are that applicants must have a relationship with a JN Group company for at least one year, either as a member or customer, or be a client of JN Bank, JN Fund Managers, JN General Insurance, JN Life Insurance, JN Small Business Loans, Jamaica Automobile Association, or JN Money Services. The applicant should be a student at any of the following institutions. The University of the West Indies, the Northern Caribbean University, the Edna Manley School of the Visual and Performing Arts, the College of Agriculture, Science and Education case, or the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean and Teachers College. Still making Mellow TV news tonight, four-term Member of Parliament Lisa Hanna was today named as front-runner for the presidency of the People's National Party, PNP, by a Bill Johnson poll commissioned and published by the Jamaica Observer. Ms. Hanna says she does not see it as an invitation to take anything for granted nor make assumptions, but rather as one of the most somber moments for her as she reflects on the 82-year history of the party and its future. Ms. Hanna says she has begun a process of consultation with senior party members, critical party groups and affiliates, and other individuals as part of taking a decision on whether to offer herself. The MP says she will continue this consultation and listening until the meeting of the party's National Executive Council, NEC, on Sunday, September 27. Now, at that meeting, crucial decisions on the process and date for the Special Delegates Conference to elect a new leader will be taken. Ms. Harris says she will subsequently announce her decision on whether she will be offering herself for president. Meanwhile, Mark Golding, a senior member of the People's National Party and member of parliament for St. Andrew Southern, has signaled his intention to run for the presidency of the People's National Party. He made a post on his Facebook page yesterday, making his intentions known. In his post, he said, and I quote, After consultations with my family, senior leaders of the PNP and the executive of South St. Andrew, I have decided that the rebuilding of our great party is paramount. Comrades, on your mark. End quote. Continuing with the news tonight, the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation yesterday hosted a virtual information session on water and health. It was held in keeping with the measures outlined in the National Water Sector Policy and Implementation. Acting Senior Director of the Water Policy and Monitoring Branch in the Ministry, Talia Gibson, says the policy specifically speaks to standards for access to portable water supply and improved sanitation. She explained that all households will have access to portable water supply by 2030. 
Ms. Gibson added that for sanitation, cities and major towns will have sewage services provided by a utility company. She said where sewage service is not economically feasible, all new developments will have access to safe and environmentally friendly sanitation solutions, which will preserve the privacy and dignity of users. Ms. Gibson also said that a standard for non-sewage areas will be established and enforced by the National Building Code, Ministry of Health and Wellness, regulations and stipulations by the municipal corporations and local authority, and National Environmental and Planning Agency. And those were the stories making news tonight. I return with the recap. We'll now take a break and then join Christopher Scott with sports. <laughs> 